And to talk about the protests that have gripped Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, we now joined by Amnesty International South Africa's Executive Director, uh, Shanila Mohamed. Shanila, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. As we've seen a, a few seconds ago, uh, protests in KwaZulu-Natal and acts of looting and vandalism in Gauteng and in different parts of Gauteng and KZN the past few days. Your thoughts, what are your thoughts on this? Good evening and good evening to your viewers. I mean, absolutely horrifying visuals uh, coming out of Kozulu Natal. And I mean, the situation, as you, you've been saying rightly, is just unprecedented. Uh, you know, the extent of lawlessness and criminality uh, is is just horrifying. And, um, you know, in our view, I mean, this is absolutely shocking. I mean, you know, one of the things that we are very clear about is the right to protest the fact that people have the right to protest, and that is enshrined in the Constitution. Um, but what we've been seeing in the last uh, few days is that, you know, this is not uh, protest action. This is pure criminality. This is pure uh, lawlessness. And, you know, unfortunately, um, it doesn't seem, and even from your visuals, that the police are, are fully equipped to be dealing with this because, I mean, you know, in all the visuals that your reporters were showing just, just now, I I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it wasn't clear where the police presence was as people were dragging beds and mattresses and, as, as you rightly said, a full sofa set. Uh, so it's horrifying and it should be brought to an end immediately. I mean, the law enforcement agents should be stepping in. Uh, everything needs to happen to stop this uh, from continuing because, you know, the loss to the country is just uh, phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's quite uh, appalling to see that there isn't any police present, and if there is, it's very, very limited to quell the situation. One then wonders whether the police are, you know, are still monitoring the situation and treating it with kid gloves to avoid another marigana, as they've said in the past. And th th these protests, Shanila, are happening in the name of former President Jacob Zuma. Do you think that those close to him should condemn them? Well, I think that, you know, uh, we need to be realistic. I mean, the protest may have started off in the name of, uh, you know, former uh, President Jacob Zuma, but what we see now is definitely just pure crime and lawlessness. And, uh, you know, what is actually quite shocking is uh, the police, uh, you know, the lack of police presence. Now, you know, yes, we understand that we don't want a repeat of Marikana, but that does not mean that lawlessness should go unabated. That just means that the police need to be better equipped to be handling, uh, you know, um, uh, public order management. And, 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 you know, it doesn't seem like uh, they have things under control. I mean, the fact that we're now into the second night, uh, you know, in KZ, KZN of this type of looting uh, shows that there's definitely an unpreparedness uh, on the part of the police. And if it is, as you're saying, them, uh, you know, walking on edge, and, and treading gently, then that is even more unacceptable because, you know, what message are they sending to the looters? What message are they sending to South Africa that, you know, you can do this type of stuff and get away with it? Uh, and I think that for me is the most unacceptable uh, thing. And, you know, We've seen the numbers of people that are involved, and in fact, your reporter also talked about young children being groped in. I mean, how are they going to uh, hold these people to account when they're not there? Who are they going to arrest? You know, it's just, um, it's just, uh, just shocking. And Shamila, do you think the protesters should use other means to voice their concerns? And what are possibly those means? Well, you know, according to the Bill of Rights, uh, you know, in the Constitution, you do have, uh, everyone has the right to protest. But the most important part of that right is that it's got to be peaceful and it's got to be unarmed. Now, what we've been seeing in the last couple of days is, 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 is not that. I mean, we've been seeing, we've been hearing of live ammunition. We've been seeing, you know, a violence emerging. And, you know, this is not the way to protest. And this is not what uh, the right to protest 
protest is all about. So, you know, in answer to your question, is there an, another way to do this? Yes. I mean, that's what the courts are there for. That's what the law is about. I mean, tomorrow we know that uh, the Con Court, uh, the Constitutional Court, is going to deliver its judgment on the application put forward, forward by President Jacob, former President uh, Jacob Zuma, uh, you know, on the rescission of his of the judgment. And, you know, I mean, that is the way in which, uh, you know, his uh, grouping needs to deal with what is going on. As for the people who are protesting, I mean, they do have the right to protest. But as I said earlier, the right comes with responsibility and we are not seeing that responsibility or that accountability. So, you know, this is not about protest action. This is, you know, the majority of what's happened has been about uh, about criminals taking advantage of a situation. And even if there were genuine protesters there, uh, you know, it's all been lost in this criminality. So whatever they had set out to do, they have not achieved. In fact, all they've done is made the situation worse for themselves because nobody is now focusing on, on whether or not President Zuma should be released. People are now focusing on the lawlessness that is happening as a result of these protests. I'm actually glad that you raised that point, and the, I mean, the point of uh, another recourse could be the courts. But uh, interestingly, I've been having a conversation with one activist who said that they've lost all hopes in the courts, they've lost all hopes in the means of protesting to, vo to make their voices heard, because they've been They've been protesting to no avail. They're still hungry. There's still no jobs. And the only way is to, to take the law onto their own hands, just so they have food on their table. In as much as he's making a valid point, but this is definitely not the way. But what he's doing, the, you know, is he's mixing up everything. So, yes, we understand that under COVID, uh, life has become tough. And before COVID, we've have got huge inequality. Uh, you know, this country, majority of the people are struggling. Um, but what, what, you know, what he's doing, the activist you spoke to, is he's actually mixing it all up. This protest action started as a support action for former President Jacob Zuma's incarceration. And now we are talking about bread and butter issues and we are talking about food on the table and the reason I'm trying to justify criminality. So, you know, by saying that, well, you know, um, the reason that we're stealing, the reason that we're breaking into, into these shops, spa and pick and pay and just taking everything, which is really against the law, is because we are hungry, because we are, we are fed up. But that's not how it started. And that is not the way to deal with hunger and with inequality. We understand the frustration, but taking the law into your own hands is not going to solve the problem. In fact, it's going to create more problems for the people who are doing it. So, you know, again, if you look at the confused nature of what's been happening over the past few days, you know, from where it started as a political protest to where we've ended up now, where people are trying to justify uh, stealing and breaking into shops and, you know, just being just being criminals, uh, you know, by saying that, well, you know, we had to do this because we are hungry, because we have, don't have jobs. But what they do is actually going to take away jobs from other people. And what they're doing is going to, to make, make these businesses lose hundreds of millions, if not billions. And, you know, where does that leave the economy then? So, you know, that whole argument does not hold water. And I think, you know, we just have to call it what it is. It is pure lawlessness and criminality that is being done in the name of, uh, you know, uh, protest action or, or you know, um, uh, trying to deal with uh, social economic uh, issues. And that's not to say that South Africa does not have dire social economic issues and that people are not hungry and that COVID has not affected them. But this is not about that. You're quite right, Shanila. I mean, we shouldn't be using euphemisms. We shouldn't be euphemistic in condemning such a blatantly, dastardly criminal act. It is absolutely criminal and uh, should be treated as such. And one moment of lawlessness will take months and, uh, pro and possibly years to rebuild what has been damaged in just a couple of hours. And we must remember that, you know, these businesses and, you know, the, the, the country is already reeling from COVID and the impacts of COVID. I mean, tonight we heard our president say that, you know, we're going to have to maintain uh, being at uh, adjusted level four. And, uh, you know, that means that businesses are, are still going to be struggling. And so, you know, this is not a good message to be sending out to the world, uh, especially if, if there is a desire for investors to come into South Africa, because, you know, every 
if, if an investor looks for safety and security when it comes to you know investments and you know at, at, and so covid has already uh, devastated a, a, an economy that by the way was not doing well even before covid and now we've got these riots and these protest actions and you know the the burning of the trucks and the hundreds of millions that have been lost to that i mean that is that is money and that is uh, income that will not be recovered anytime soon so you know the damage has been huge it's devastating and let's hope that the authorities step in and you know we really call on them to step in and bring an end to this lawlessness because you know to, we are all sitting at the uh, in on tenterhooks we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow once the judgment is uh, is delivered by the constitutional court and if it goes against president jacob zuma then what's going to happen so you know this the country needs to feel safe we need to be feeling safe in our country and we need to feel that the authorities and the government are in control and at the moment you know we're seeing a bit of control but we're also seeing a bit of uh, of uh, failure uh, on the part of the authorities so somehow or the other it's got to all come together and those that are responsible have got to be caught have got to be held to account and this lawlessness and and you know this rampant looting has got to be brought to an end and how do you suggest the country's authorities should have handled this and should continue handling this? Because sitting on the fence is definitely not helping, as you can see, this live, I mean, these visuals coming from KwaZulu-Natal and other parts of the country, it's definitely not the way. I mean, it, it, this brings into, into sharp focus the role of our intelligence. Clearly, the intelligence has failed South Africans because this protest and these uh, looting incidents are not catching the authorities by surprise. This was planned days before. You know, I mean, you make very strong points. And, you know, uh, I mean, for me, I think that the biggest challenge uh, that that we're facing here is that, you know, there doesn't seem to be a coordinated response to this. And, you know, it's all very well to release statements, you know, saying that those that are, are looting, etc., will be uh, face the full might of the law. But when they are actually looting, there's no sign of the full might of the law. So, you know, it's not a deterrent. Uh, they need to put action to where the words are and they need to back up what they're saying with uh, uh, you know a, a police presence on the ground with those that are looting those that are being caught I mean you know your visuals were so blatantly clear people are dragging beds and you know why is there nobody there arresting them and throwing them into trucks I mean why and taking them and processing them I mean these are criminals people are stealing and they are breaking the law but you know we, we, we're seeing politicians really statement after statement but what we're not seeing and we're not being encouraged by is the ability to handle uh, the situation on the ground now we're not saying it's easy public order policing is never easy and these situations are never ever easy to contain because you know on the one hand you don't want the police to be using excessive force and you know shooting rubber bullets and killing people and on the other hand you do want to see that they are in control but that is what they should be trained for and that is what they should they should have expected as you rightly saying and you know you know why does there seem to be no strategy i mean why is there seem to be a shortage of police officers and those are questions that you know we as as the public have the right to pose to the to the government you know what is the why, why is this not being contained are we going to go into another two three days i mean we've heard uh, you know those that are organizing these protests say quite clearly that this is not going to stop they're going to continue and they're going to continue and of course, you know, is it going to spread further than Gauteng? Uh, you know, is it going to spread throughout the country? You know, what what is the plan to contain this? And that's uh, that's what we need uh, the government to come out at the level of the president and say exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to contain this uh, lawlessness so that, uh, you know, South Africans feel confident that uh, everything is under control. It should uh, be a blatant wake-up call, especially for Police Minister Peggy Kleder, to ensure that his men are on the ground and ensuring that this violence does not extend to other provinces. Shanila, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.